Hello everyone. Welcome to our class. My name is Ko Chen Li. In today's sections, we will talk about system backup and recovery. Backups are insurance plans, plain and simple. When disaster strikes, your backup implementation will either leave you out of harm's way or drowning without a life preservers. After all, if you have implemented a well thought out back plan, backup plan and practice the necessary recovery procedures until they are second nature. A server that have started working is nothing more than a bump in the road that you can smooth out even if you have to rebuild the servers from scratch to do it. Ask yourself the following questions. First, how important is the data stored on the server? Second, how much data in total is there to backup? Third, how long does each backup take? Fourth, do you have the equipment needed to perform backups? Fifth, who will be responsible for performing backups? The answers to these questions will help you develop your backup and recovery plan. Try to get the backup resources you need and do so without reservation. If you have to make incremental purchases over a period of several months to get the backup equipment and surprises, do so without hesitation. And plan separate backup strat strategies for system files and data files. First, system files be used by the operating system and applications. These files change when you install new components, service packs, or pages. They include system state data. And the second, data files be created by applications and users. Application files contain configuration settings and data. And user files contain the daily work of users and can include documents, spreadsheets, media, files, and so on. And these files change every day. And specific backup and recovery techniques for key services are as follows. The dynamic host. Configuration protocol DHCP you should periodic, periodically back up the DHCP configuration and the DHCP database. Domain name system, DNS. You are using standard zones. DNS configuration data is stored in the system root, system32, DNS folders. And backups of zones data are stored in system root, system32, DNS, backup folder. And group policies. You should periodically backup the group policy object, GPO, configurations. File servers. You should implement Valence Shadow Copy Service, VSS, for all network file shares. This makes it easier to restore previous versions of files. In addition, you should back up all user data files on the file server regularly. The basic types of backups include the following. First, normal. A normal backup is a full backup of all the files and folders you select, regardless of the archive attribute settings. When the file is backed up, the archive attribute is turned off. 
second copy. A copy backup is a full backup of all files and folders you select, regardless of the archive attribute settings. Unlike a normal backup, the archive attribute on files isn't turned off by the backup. This means that you can use a copy backup to, to create an additional or supplemental backup of a system without interfa interfering with the existing backup strategy. Third, incrementals. An incremental backup is used to create a backup of all files that have changed since the last normal or incremental backup. As such, an incremental backup is a partial backup. This means that each incre incremental backup contains only the most recent changes. Differentials. A differential backup is used to create a backup of all files that have changed since the last normal backup. Like an incremental backup, in a differential backup, the backup program uses the archive attribute to determine which files should be backed up. This means that each different backup contains all changes. Fifth, daily. A daily backup uses the modification date on the files rather than the archive attributes. If a file has been changed on the day the backup is performed, the file will be backed up. This technique doesn't change the archive attributes of files and is useful when you want to perform an extra backup without interfering with existing backup strategy. If you use a media rotation schema, monthly or quarterly media sets can simply be media sets that you are rotating to off-site storage. Consider the following media rotation scenarios. First, media rotation with three weekly media sets and one monthly media set and one tab or disk for each day of the week. Three weekly media sets are maintained on site. Once a month, you rotate the previous week's media set to off-site storage. Second, media rotation with three weeks media sets, one monthly media set, and one quarterly media set, and one tab or disk for each workday. Three weekly media sets are maintained on site, and once a month, you rotate the previous week's media set to off site storage. Once a quarter, you rotate the previous week's media set to off site storage. And many backup and recovery solutions are available for use with Windows Server 2008. When selecting a backup utility, you will need to keep in mind the types of backups you want to perform and the type of data you are backing up. And you can use Windows Server backup for recovery in several ways. Rather than having to manually restore files from multiple backups if the files were stored in incremental backups. You can recover folders and files by choosing the date on which you back up the version of the item or items you want to restore. And the first time you use Windows Server backup, you will see a warning that no backup has been configured for the computer as shown in figures. And you clear this warning by creating a backup using the backup once features 
or by scheduling backups to run automatically using backup schedule feature. When you use a Windows Server Backup, the first backup of a server is always a full backup. This is because the full backup process clears the archive bits on file so that Windows Server Backup can track which files, which files are updated subsequently. And you can configure the default performance settings by clicking Config Performance Settings in the Action Pane or on the Action Menu doing one of the following and then click OK. Select Always Perform Full Backup to perform full backups of all attached drives. And select Always Perform Incremental Backups to perform incremental backups of all attached drives and select constant and then from the option list provided. Select whether to perform full or incremental backups for individual, individual attached drives. As part of the backup process, you also will need to specify a storage location for backups. Keep the following in mind when you are choosing storage locations. First, use an internal hard disk for storing backups. You are limited in how you can recover your systems. You can recover the data from a variant, but you cannot rebuild the entire disk structure. Second, use an ex external hard disk for storing backups. The disk will be dedicated for storing your backups and will not be visible in Windows Explorer. Choosing these options will format the selected disk or disks, removing any existing data. Third, use a remote shared folder for storing backups. Your backup will be overwritten each time you create a new backup. Do not choose these options if you want to store multiple backups for each server. Fourth, use removable media or DVDs for storing backups. And you can only recover entire volumes, not applications, or individual files. The media you use must be at least one gigabyte in size. Click backup schedule on the action menus or in the actions panes to start the backup schedule wizard. After scanning the available disks, Windows Server Backup starts the backup schedule wizard. Click Next on the Select Backup Configuration page, showing the following screen. Note the backup size list under the full server options. This is the storage space required to backup the server data, applications, and the system state. To pick up all volumes on the server, select the full server options and then click Next. To pick up selected volumes on the server, click Custom and then click Next. If you selected Custom, the Select Backup Items page is displayed as shown in the following screen. Select the checkboxes for the volumes that you want to pick up and clear the checkboxes for the volumes that you want to exclude. Only locally attached disks formatted with NTFS 
can be included in scheduled backups. Balance lack contain boot files, operating system files, or applications are included in the backup by default and cannot be excluded. On the specified backup time page, showing the following screen, you can specify how often and when you want to run backups. To perform backups daily at a specific time, choose once a day and then select the time to start running the daily backup. To perform backups multiple times each day, choose more than once a day. Next, click a start time on the available time and then click add to move the time under scheduled times. Repeat for each start time that you want to add. Click next when you are ready to continue. Whenever Windows Server backup backs up a server, it writes related events related to the Windows event logs. You will find events related to the shadow copies in the application log and all other backup events in the Microsoft backup operational logs as shown in figures. By looking through the operational log, you can quickly determine when backups were started, when they were completed, and the reasons for failure, such as when backups were canceled by another administrator or there was not enough space on the backup target. To recover non-system volumes, files, and folders, or application data, start Windows Server Backup. Click Recover in the Actions pane or on the Action menus to start a recovery wizard. On the Getting Started page, select this server as shown in the following screens, and then click Next. On the Select Backup Date page, shown in the following screen, select the date and the time of the backup you want to restore using the calendars and the time list. Backups are available for dates shown in bold. Click Next. On the Select Recovery Type page, shown in the following screen, do one of the following. To restore individual files and folders, select files and folders, and then click next. On the select items to recover page, on the available items, click the plus sign to extend the list until the folders you want is visible. To restore non-critical, non-operating system balance, select Balance and then click Next. On the Select Balance page, you will see a list of source and destination balance. Select the checkboxes associated with the source balance that you want to recover. Third. To restore data from applications, select Applications and then click Next. On the Select Application page, under Applications, click the application that you want to recover. And the fastest and easiest way to back up and restore a server system state is to use the WBA admin. With WB admins, 
you can use the star system state backup command to create a backup of the system state for computer and the state the star system state recovery command to restore computer system state. When the startup repair tools and other support tools fail to recover normal operations, then you can recover a server's operating system or perform a full system recovery by using a Windows installation disk and the backup that you created earlier with Windows Server Backup. These two operations differ in fundamental ways. First, an operating system recovery. You recover all critical violence, but do not recover non-system violence. A critical violence is a violence that has files the operating system needs during startup and normal operations and includes both the boot variants and the system variants. Second, a full system recovery. Syst Windows Server backup reformats and repartitions all disks that are attached to the servers and then set about recovering the server's variants. and choose how to restore the backup page. Do the following optional tasks and then click next. First, select the format and repart repartition disk checkbox. To delete exi existing partitions and reformat the destination disk to be the same as the backup. Second, Click the Exclude Disks button and then select the checkboxes associated with any disks you want to exclude from being formatted and partitioned. The disk that contains the backup that you are using is, is automatically excluded. Third, click Install Drivers to install device drivers for the hardware to which you are recovering. Fourth, click Advanced to specify whether the computer is restarted and the disks are checked for errors immediately after recovery operations is complete. On the confirmation page, review the details for the re restorations and then click finished. The Windows complete PC restore wizards will then restore the operating system or the full server as appropriate for the op options you have selected. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our class. In these sections, we will talk about the system backup and restore. We will show you how to backup your systems and restore it step by step. Before we start, let's see the devices we need to prepare for backing up our system. First, the system itself. You can only back up your system while the system is functional. So it is recommended that you can back up your system regularly in order to keep the latest working version before your system crashes. Second, the external storage device. It is used to store your system backup image. Although you can backup your system in the same disk, it is not recoverable if your file system also crashes. It is highly recommended if you can store your backup image in the external storage devices, such as USB drive, CD-ROM, or external hard drive. Here we will use the external hard drive to demo the backup process. Now we are ready to backup our system. To backup your system in Windows 7, you can click on Start Computer and right-click on the system drive, 
select properties. Then click on the Tools tab and click on the Backup button. In the pop-up windows, you can use the default settings to back up your systems or click on Change Settings to customize your settings, which is recommended for users who like to have more user controls for the backup process. So you can set up the backup destinations. Select files to be included in your image. So it will show all the files in your backup image. You can check or uncheck the files you don't want to be included. Then click Next to review your settings. So once you are done, click Save Settings and Exit button to go back to the previous window. Now it's ready to back up your system. Click Backup now, the backup process will start automatically. And you can click on View Details to see the process of backing up. So once the process is done, in your external drive, you will see two backup files and image folders if you create it once. And this is the process of backup your system. Now we have backup files to restore your system. To restore your system, go to Start, Control Panel, System and Security, and select Backup and Restore. In these windows, select Manage Space to find your backup image. Select Browse to open up the drive. And double click on the backup files and select Restore My Files from this backup. You can select files to restore by clicking Browse for Files. Here we only select one file's name desktop to restore it. You also can click on Browse for Folders to restore the folders. Here we are going to restore the folder name Favorites. Then click Next to select the location you want to restore. It. You can override the original files or select a new location to restore your files and folders. So here we restore to a new location called Backup. So once you are done, just click Restore to start the process. And this is the process of restoring your systems.